Hi everyone! So in the first part of this series we discussed the first two points here. So first one has to do with how to use properly your data. In an ideal world you have to split it in training, testing and validation. And if you cannot do that you can use cross-validation. In the second part of the video we discussed how can, uh, how can we go beyond the root mean square error and try to use some penalties on the number of parameters. So now let's get to the cheesy part of the video. So I'm going to split the methods in three parts. The, I would call brute force methods, in retrospect methods, or in advanced methods. Which is a kind of pedestrian way to classify methods, it's slightly different than the, than the classification that I use in this video, but basically they are the same methods there. So let's just start with the brute force approach. So in an ideal world with infinite computation, we would like to do what is called best subset selection. The idea is try all the combinations of all possible regressors and try to find the best. The problem is that even for just 20 regressors, we would have a million models to fit, and this is not very effective. So there are a couple of ways to avoid this high complexity and the, the huge number of trials that we have to test. One is called forward selection and we discuss that in the other video. And the idea is to start with zero predictors and add one predictor at a time and try to see what happens there. If we do that, we're just playing with for, for 20 predictors for around 211. We can do the opposite, so we start with all the predictors at once and then remove one by one. And in this case, as we are playing with the same number of predictors and the same combinations, we again, we would have 200 models. So this is not very effective and that's why I'm calling this brute force, because this only works if the number of predictors is not too large and the data set is not too deep. Of course, there are some hybrid approaches to overcome that and one of the most popular one is start as in forward selection, adding one variable at a time. But each time you do that, you have to remove some variables so to, to check if your precision has increased or decreased. And one of the most popular is called a stepwise regression, and you need you have two significant levels for the root mean square error. So one for adding and one for removing, you do that in order to remove loops. And the idea is the following, so you start increasing and increasing and increasing, but if you go too deep, then you have to go back and remove one of those variables. So you end up with an optimal subset of the variables. As usual, there are smarter ways of doing things, and my favorite one is called recursive feature elimination that I discussed in another video, and the idea is the following. So you start with all the data, with all the, all the predictors, okay? And then after you have the split your data set in training and testing, you train the model with all the predictors, okay? After that, you run using this variable importance feature, and then you have a subset of all the parameters. And then you train again, only with these parameters. If you can improve with this new variable importance, then you remove the subset. Otherwise, you increase the number of parameters. So it's like going forward and backwards, but instead of randomly or looping through all the parameters, you're using the most important parameters there. If you want to know the details with some R code, you can go back to this video. And remember, in Carrot, you have this library, RFE, that do that for yourself. So this brute force approach is basically are trying to find what features or what predictors are affecting more the output. But they are not dealing with another interesting problem, which is called multicollinearity, and is related to these huge correlations between variables. So multicollinearity has a strong implications, and, and the problem is that the estimation of the coefficients can be arbitrary. The point is that if abdomen and thigh are so highly correlated, when you are saying that increasing, for instance, 10% or from 50 to 56, for instance, thigh, you're increasing body fat by a given amount, maybe this is wrong. Maybe this is because this is affecting abdomen and abdomen is affecting body fat. So how can we do, how can we reduce the instability, the instability of the model? One trick to do that is called vari variance inflation factor. And the idea is the following. So we can compute the correlation between uh, each predictor and the other predictors. For instance, you can do that for thigh versus all the predictors. And then you define this parameter. This parameter basically ranges from one to infinity. If th there is no correlation, this should be zero. So this would be one divided by one. And when this approaches to one, meaning that we have a strong correlations, like for instance, with BMI and abdomen, this goes to infinity. So as a rule of thumb, whenever we are between one and five, this is moderately correlated, so we could keep both parameters, but anything greater than five are highly correlated, so maybe we should consider removing those predictors. So let's take a look at some data. There are some libraries to do this, but you, we can do this by hand. So what I'm doing here is basically finding a linear uh, regression between BMI and all the other predictors, age, abdomen, and thigh. I'm going, I'm plugging this into this feed variable and I'm taking the summary and extracting the R squared from the summary. 
So as you can see here, I'm using this formula. So this is 1 divided by 1 minus r squared. So for BMI, you can see that this number is 7, so it's greater than 5. So I would say that BMI is too correlated with the other predictors, so maybe we should consider, consider removing that. What about H? Here H is close to 1, so this is good. So there are some correlations between H and the others, as you can see here, but they are not so relevant. What about abdomen? Mm, this is pretty large, so again, I would consider removing abdomen. And what about thigh? Thigh maybe is the most important one. So between BMI, abdomen, and thigh, you, you can see that this is the one who is still preserves the, the, import, the correlations with body fat, but it's not so correlated with all the variables. So the best uh, strategy here would be keeping H and thigh and r run the linear correlation again.